okay so good afternoon everyone um, i would like to First, to thank uh, Robert, James, and Susie for the organization of this event. Thank you very much for the invitation also. I'm very pleased to be here, despite the very severe situation of museums in Brazil right now. And of course, as you might have imagined, after the events of the, the past two weeks, starting with the fire of our National Museum and after uh, several other political uh, events that followed, uh, I had to change my speech for today and I actually changed it a few times and I tried, uh, of course, to discuss the definition of the museum in the light of uh, our current situation in Brazil. So that's why I'm probably going to be speaking more about this relation between museum and society which uh, has a lot to do with the current situation of museums in my country. So uh, I would like to start saying that museums are devices of power and they symbolize through this course the kind of materiality that will define a society and its sense of belonging to a nation state or to a social group of different order. In all cases, museums represent a transition from a universally shared category of value to the appropriated instrument for the benefit of certain groups. So my speech today is going to reconsider what defines a museum in the service of society according to the ICOM definition from 1974 and after from 2007 as well in the light of the current debate on the museum institution in Brazil. On this topic, I will approach museums as institutions in the service of society, but also the notion of museums that are made by society. And finally, I'll defend that museums are society and that is why they have major importance in the 21st century. Uh, in the incident in Brazil that destroyed our National Museum in Rio de Janeiro in the 2nd of September last week, almost two weeks ago, we lost the oldest museum in the country and a museum with one of the most important scientific collections in the world. More importantly, we as a society have lost an emotional place where families used to go on the weekend, kids in school discovered science and culture, and scientists were trained. For the whole country, but especially to the inhabitants of the city of Rio, this was a place of belonging and a democratic institution for a vast audience. For young people in the peripheries of the city, the National Museum was their only reference of a cultural institution and of an institution dedicated to science. So after this, to the 2nd September, the size of her loss is still being measured, but I can definitely say that museology in Brazil Let me try to will never be the just same. One second. Um, I'm sorry, I don't see my slides here. Do you? I don't know why it's not appearing. Can you see it now? That's okay. No, no problem. I, w I will continue. It's actually uh, no. We've been having issues throughout the day years. where some people can see and some people cannot. Like Susie, are you able to see these um, slides? Yet. Do I have to do something specifically? If you would like me to, Bruno, I'm more than happy to control your presentation. Okay, if you can tell me what slide you want to be on and then just say next, I'm more than happy to scroll through for you. I'll scroll through as you as you talk. Well, I, I would I would just like to show some pictures of the collections of the museum right now. But the, the slides are just more pictures, and there's no uh, much information. Okay. So 
considering all of that, the museum concept in Brazil uh, has been questioned and misused when some people asked why this museum was there in the first place, what was its importance to Brazilian present time, and some comments in social networks even stated that the museum should burn indeed because it was a symbol of colonialism. On the other hand, the mayor of Rio de Janeiro, Marcelo Crivella, gave a statement saying that the museum should be completely reconstructed as if nothing has happened and that although not originally made, and here I quote the major, it would be still the palace of the royal family from the time of the empire. And in this sense, he was disregarding the 200 years of research that configured its priceless collections. Um, in Brazil, we have never heard before so many arguments for and against the museum institutions in a country that is marked by a history of disregard towards cultural heritage and with a state that has constantly tried to control the national representations in our collective memory with the least investment in its cultural institutions. What happened with the National Museum is a painful reminder of the place of museums for Brazilian society, but also a reminder of their great importance for social transformation through knowledge production and the valorization of culture. To make the current museological debate even more critical, this Monday, the Ministry of Culture has issued a provisional measure that extinguished the Brazilian Institute of Museums, a federal institute that was created in 2009 in a very promising time for museums in the country and puts an end to the actual national policy for museums that was an important guarantee for the support from the state to all our federal institutions. With this measure, most Brazilian museums, including the devastated National Museum, will, will be dependent on private funding and private investments to even exist. So the museum is under attack as a cultural institution or as a museological concept, and we, the supposed specialists, have spent our energies in these past few days trying to defend it. It has never been more indispensable to define the museum in terms of its value to society and as an integral part of democratic states as we understand it these days. In Brazil and maybe everywhere, its relevance to society, something that was a given at least since the roundtable of Santiago in 1972, is now being questioned for a reason. In some way, we have all failed. The question for Brazil is, if museology can still make amendments with society to share an open and democratic device that can be beneficial to all, as recent history has shown. So, in order to make explicit what is at stake right now in Brazil, I would have to uh, recur to the, the history of the National Museum to discuss its importance in the present. As the historiography of museums in Brazil has shown, the history of the National Museum of Rio de Janeiro begins with colonization. The museum was created with the colonial purpose to collect and import items and the knowledge produced in the colony to the metropolis. Its most direct antecedent, which was called the House of Birds, created in 1784, worked as a colonial depository that collected, stored, and prepared natural products and indigenous ornaments to send to Lisbon. With the transfer of the Portuguese royal family to Brazil in 1808, and the transfer of the capital of the empire due to the expansion of Napoleonic empire in Europe, the House of Birds becomes obsolete, and a true metropolitan museum is created in the tropics, inverting the colonial pact. The National Museum, as demonstrated by the historian of sciences, Maria Margarete Lopes, has participated in the formation of modern sciences in the period of Portuguese empire. It was created in 1818 
in a moment when the ancient colonial system in Europe was facing unprecedented crisis and some important educational reforms were being implemented by Pombelian policy and administration. While the metropolis strengthened the basis of the production of knowledge on the so-called New World, the colony built up its first collections based on scientific principles. What happens in Brazil with the rise of the National Museum is the continuity with the European model of museum inherited from the Enlightenment. As Lopez puts it, the colony commanded the change and ultimately assimilated the metropolis. In other words, the colonial museology in the, cost, in the context of creation of the first museum in Brazil was in its basis as a metropolitan project and reproduced in the South the project of science developed in Portugal. So the first colonial museum had a central role in the development of a science marked by the criteria of neutrality and rationality disseminated from modern Europe. However, as we observe in the case of Brazil, in the process of diffusion of the so-called scientific colonialism, a process throughout which the natural sciences were institutionalized in the country, several mechanisms of adjustments and adaptations were operating accordingly to the specificities of the local context and the needs of local population. Thus, in continuous process of appropriation and consumption of this imported institution, the museum in Brazil has been transformed and reconfigured, producing a museology mestiza, as we call it in Brazil, which means mixed with several cultural influences and based on multiple intellectualities. Later, in the 19th century, the museum would take on the role to instruct a civilized elite based on the main scientific institutions in Europe, notably the Museum d'Histoire Naturelle of Paris, created in 1793. Its main goal was to become a legitimate center for public instruction. During the 1830s and the 1840s, a project for the implementation of a scientific program for continuous education or a faculty of natural sciences was widely discussed. The museum then would form its collections while building a, rec a recognized model for scientific institution in the country. In the 20th century, it would finally become a university museum belonging to the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro to this day. The importance of the colonial history of our national museum persists in the fact that this museum, as the first research institution in Brazil, has displaced and relocalized the Eurocentric subject of knowledge, reinventing other subjects and epistemologies, and allowing Brazilian intellectuals to question our colonial roots. This, for me, is why national and colonial museums have great importance in the world. And this is a lesson we have learned, unfortunately, from the biggest cultural tragedy in Brazilian re recent history. So like in the movement of Ida e Vuelta, going and returning in the conceptual round trip described by Manuela Carneiro da Cunha, the museum has traveled from the experts to the social groups and returned to the experts and political agents that intend to redefine it before the semantic complexity that this concept has achieved in our days. And that's how big is the challenge for ICON today to actually define a concept that is multicultural. Because museums can travel and the concept of the museum can travel as well, we can constantly subvert its logics of power, creating new uses and definitions. In this sense, the social institution does not merely serve society, but it is made by society and it is society in its most powerful sense. According to the ICON definition approved in 2007, the museum is in the service of society. Although this idea attributes a social role to the museum, it leaves us with some questions. For instance, 
Which society in the singular form does it refer to? Who is in charge when we say in the service of? Who is dictating the rules and to whom? Is the museum a social device that can be used for all or does its definition delineate who can use it and in the service of whom? Are we defining political relations at the same time as we define the museum of the 21st century? These are only some of the questions that we might need to explore in the current debate over the museum definition and its validity to society. The institution that was being conceived when some of its central actors claimed for its social role in the 1970s, when this phrase was introduced to the text by ICOM, specifically in 1974, was still limited by the Cartesian hierarchy based on the separation of a sovereign subject of knowledge and those who are subjected as objects in this museum. In its recent history, the National Museum of the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro contributed for the change of this ontological hierarchy that has marked the history of museums in the West. So here I would like to remind us of some important numbers that marked the history of this institution. Uh, please, James, if you can uh, put in the slide where I have some numbers after the image of the museum on fire. Okay. So here we have the fact that this museum uh, was created in 1818, so he, it was completing 20 hundred years this year, and we had a full agenda of celebration, and uh, this year the museum had finally got an investment for reformulating its galleries, and these works were about to uh, begin when uh, the fire happened. Uh, another important date in the history of this museum, 1927, was the first education program in a Brazilian institution with an education sector, which is very important, considering that in the world most uh, education, education programs in museums were going to be developed in the 40s after the war. Uh, another important year, 1932, is the year when, the, for the first time, the term museologia, museology, or museum studies was ever used in Brazil, and it's the first time in research that we can find a document actually using the term museologia. It was in the documentations of the museum. Uh, and another number, this museum got 20 million items in its collections and more than 90% of these collections were lost in the fire. Uh, and this last number, which is for me is very important and expressive of the social role of this museum, uh, recent research has shown that 46% of visitors in 2007 and 2018, 2017 and 2018 came from the poorer section of society. So uh, almost half of the visitors of these museums came from the periphery and the most poor sec poorer sections of Rio de Janeiro society. And so of course it has to do with the fact that this museum has the oldest education program in the country. Furthermore, I would like to add that the National Museum was the first museum in Brazil to employ indigenous people in its staff and even as research assistants. The program of social anthropology housed in the museum since 1968 has trained several indigenous who are now scientists. The museum collections and research projects have been developed in deep connection with other indigenous museums in Brazil, such as the Maguta Museum, reaching for other knowledge and and cosmologists in order to reorganize its priorities and reconsider its existent collections. So it was really a museum connected to the people, despite the discourse we hear now that science excludes the people. And 
fact, museums are relevant to society because of their very ability to social change, to produce new ways of the people, to build their sense of belonging, the connection among each other, and creating new platforms for different versions of the past. Museums are devices for social change, for society in general, and for cultural production, and they reconnect with what is valuable. They make connections among people and heritage, and among people and other people. But also, to reveal its own values, museums also permit the, the people and the visitors to rethink the past and review their values in constant transformation due to the negotiable narratives that will define in the present the cultural heritage that we wish to transmit for future generations. Our colonial past is being disputed at this very moment when the first Brazilian National Museum, as it was, no longer exists. Please, James, if you can, pass to the last two, the last three images. Some of the images show how the museum is right now inside. Uh, unfortunately, the, the people who worked in the museum are, not, are still not allowed to go inside because the building has not been secured. And so this is the state uh, of the insides of the museum. After the fire is gone, what is still burning are the identities of those who believed in this institution and in the power of democratic production of knowledge accessible to all. In a world where communication is mediated by fake news and the validity of science is put into question, the image of the first Brazilian scientific institution on fire is for me a symbol of the fact that a change will come. What we understand today and for the past decades as a museum, a concept subordinated to the idea of truth and to the power of a certain scientific paradigm need to be revised in order not only to become socially obsolete, but to continue existing in our world. I think that the National Museum was a good example of a museum that did more than it could with the burden of science and colonialism, that it helped to reinvent with the support of society, of its scientists and of the public institutions dedicated to education and research. So recently, the movement of mourning for the National Museum has been transformed in a movement of political fight for all museums in the, in the country. And in Rio, specifically this week, a big movement is being conducted by the students of museology of Unihil who are demanding immediate changes in the government's measure for the museum field. The movement, entitled Museu para Todos, which translates Museum for All, can already be considered the biggest political event in Brazilian museology since the fight for the professional law for museologists in the beginning of the 1980s. You were just speaking of activism in museum, and what we witness in Brazil right now is the museum and museum professionals working as activists for the very museum and the place of, of these institutions in current society. So today, in the middle of the politicization of the field, museology does not differentiate theory, practice, and activism as it did in the past. Museums are arenas of political disputes and fights for representation. I think this has already been said in several of the previous speeches today. This has always been the case since the first museum, 200 years ago, in the case of Brazil. Museologists, in this case, are scientists, thinkers, social and political actors who create the basis for the empowerment of the whole society. In this sense, I dare to propose that if some definition is conceivable for the museums, I can should phrase it as such. A museum is a political institution for the democratic use of society in its plurality. We usually say that museums are good to think 
because they give us the freedom to imagine new worlds and to resignify the world as we know it through reflexive experiences. The main social role of museums today is to give people the ability to imagine new worlds and creative alternatives to the past and the present. Museums are socially, socially relevant because they present new windows of possibility when we can only see what rational thinking allows us to perceive from our immediate reality. Our National Museum of Rio de Janeiro for 200 years made children believe that they could be scientists. It allowed indigenous people to become anthropologists. It has built material bridges between the poor and the elite. Despite the fire and the ashes, this is not the end for this museum that has, through science, opened so many doors and windows to imagination. We hope to reimagine it and to recreate the dream of a museum for all. Long live our National Museum. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Great, and thank you, Bruno, for joining us today. That was a really stirring um, presentation, and we all, of course, express our just abhorrence at the tragedy of the loss of the uh, museum in Brazil. That was a horrible tragedy. So uh, we thank you for joining us today. We thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, James, Susie, and I. Uh, Susie has some, oh, sorry about that. Forgot the video. <laughs> It's getting toward the end of the day, and we're all starting to forget things. So again, thank you for joining us today. Susie, do you have anything you'd like to wrap up with? Yeah. So this symposium, of course, would never have been possible without all of our collaboration. And I just wanted to personally and professionally thank James, who led the overall management platform and podcast interviews, and Rob, who produced the website and podcast interviews, uh, and both of whom I worked with to organize the symposium for 10 months. And thank you to Peter Davies, Director of Arts and Sciences, who supported the promotional materials. It really is about teamwork, and we're grateful for all the contributions from our SNU's deans, faculty, and staff, ICAFON board members, Francois, Bruno, and Anna, whom I consulted monthly, uh, keynote speakers, chairs, panelists, our wonderful audience, and organizations who help with the announcements, and of course, all of your valuable time. And I think we've had fruitful discussions on the three themes that will lead to genuine effort and the contribution to ICOM's museum redefinition process. And we'll be compiling the results of the questionnaires and short polls, the podcast interviews, symposium discussions, and papers for publication. And we'll also have recordings soon, and we'll all have them archived with ICAFOM and SNU's academic archive and disseminated through various channels of communication. And I think if it were a physical symposium, we could all go out to dinner together, but perhaps there will come a time in the future when we do hold a physical symposium here in North America or a hybrid one. Um, in the meantime, do join us in Tehran, Iran at the 40th annual ICAFOM Symposium in October. October. Thank you. And I would just like to reaffirm um, Susie's thanks to everybody who made this possible, including to her. Um, I said it in the opening remarks, but this really was a team effort. And um, and it also wouldn't have been possible without all of you. So you know, we have uh, Susie, Rob, and Pete Davies who helped us with um, with marketing and the creation of materials. Um, you know, all took a major role in helping to make this a reality, but um, to all of you as well, both participants and to attendees, um, it takes both in order to pull off a successful conference and symposium, and this being completely online, um, it, as I said at the beginning, it did offer a great opportunity to bring together scholars and participants and attendees from around the nation and around the world, actually. So um, I think, you know, 
as Susie said, it would be great if we could all meet together um, and be together, but given that we have constraints on costs and, um, and time and the ability to travel, uh, it was amazing to meet all of you um, and be able to work with you, people that I probably never would have had the chance to meet or work with. So thank you all, and thank you for making this an amazing symposium. Uh, as Susie said, the recordings will be made available once we have finalized them, and as will the papers. And um, I hope that you all have a great weekend. Thank you again.